I'm Martin Edwards. I've lived here since I was two. There's a family owned farm and about um, 18, 19 years ago we started to look at putting our wind farm here. When we first got interested in possibly putting on a single turbine originally, that was a spin-off from a protest my mother was involved in against a nuclear power station which was posed further down into Cornwall. And um, one breakfast she came up with a very sensible suggestion, instead of just objecting, perhaps we ought to do something for ourselves. It's bloody windy here, why not make use of it? And in sort of mid-80s went out to Denmark on a little fact-finding trip with a few other farmers. And we ended up with the 10 400 kilowatt machines we've got now. Living and, living and working with turbines has a definite effect on how you regard power. You're aware of um, how it's produced, where it comes from, and uh, sort of relative quantities of power. By understanding how it's made, you become far more conscious of how precious power is and how ridiculously cheap power has been in the UK over the last 50 odd years. Turbines follow the wind. Um, they will also always produce when the wind blows and not produce when there is no wind. And that's in, that's in the nature of it. It's a, it's a natural renewable energy source and it will be variable. The thing that really matters with renewables is nothing to do with whether it's technical efficiency or how often they're generating or whatever. What matters is are they producing power cleanly and are they producing it at an affordable price? Charging up a little electric scooter is satisfying to know that all the electricity I use here ultimately comes from renewables. It's a great little thing, quite fun um, and very, very practical. You know, for trips up to five, six miles, no problem at all. To charge that up to get sort of 20 miles range out of it, it's probably costing about 15p. Um, I'm amazed they're not more common. Unfortunately, they're a little more expensive than a petrol version. You get a real sense of the power of nature and it's great to be able to harness it and make use of it. Wind turbines are a part of the solution, they're not all of it. Things like this are at the moment the most cost effective way of doing something about global warming. All of them are needed together to be an effective solution, you can't rely on one technology. You get, you get quite attached to them after a while. Um, I wouldn't say they develop their own characters but some of them, get their, some of them sort of get their own nicknames and rather than just numbers after a while. Ah, there's one down there called Lightning Strike. <laughs> the first one to get hit by lightning, uh, which was actually very, very soon after the wind farm went up, within about, oh, within a fortnight, which was uh, not a good introduction to wind farms. <laughs> yeah, they're sort of a bit like old friends. I'd be sorry to see them go, but they've got to be replaced at some point and time's coming up. I think I'm probably going to be involved in renewable energy for the rest of my life one way or another. I'll be very, very surprised if I gave up on it.